Hello and welcome back to the Des Bishop Podcast. It's great to be back. Thanks to everybody uh, who watched and listened now that we're uh, doing a bit more video stuff. we got a great episode coming up today with Stephen Mullen and it's our first Zoom ep. So hopefully this is uh, going to work out video wise, but uh, you know, I, I, we've got more time now with everything. So I feel like it's worth, it's worth a shot to try to, uh, you know, learn bits of uh, little, uh, little audio video techniques and tricks and stuff. So anyway, thanks. Uh, thanks to everyone who showed the feedback, made it feel like it was worthwhile. I apologize for the mess behind me. I didn't even organize. I don't even, I didn't even shut the bloody cupboard. So you can see all the crappy stuff that I've I've bought to get me through this. Anyway, I'm not going to complain about Trump today, uh, but it was great to see all the feedback. Even it was great to see the Trump supporters getting annoyed. You know, I like I like a bit of robust debate. You know, one one woman even threatened that uh, I was going to destroy my career like Kathy Griffin for having my own opinions. Jesus Christ, it's like living in the USSR. God forbid you should have your own opinions. You will be crushed. You will be crushed if you do not agree with me, which is, of course, part of the problem these days. Uh, Lack of respect for other people's opinions. Of course, I have passionate opinions about how I think this situation is being mishandled, but um, that's the great thing about living in a free society. You get to express those. And of course, you get to threaten my career in response. That is also part of a free society, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't show uh, that you're engaging in the debate. It actually shows that you're trying to shoot uh, shoot down the messenger. So uh, talk about the message, not the messenger. So if you have a if you have a disagreement with me, I'm quite happy to uh, engage in that disagreement. But you'll have to respond specifically to the things I'm talking about, which are mismanagement. Some people also uh, were concerned that you know we're, we're trying to suggest that Trump was just trying to be optimistic, give people hope. But uh, I think actually, from in my opinion, what gives people hope is dealing with the actual problem, not pretending that it's not there. I don't actually find that there's a hell of a lot of good that comes out of that. In fact, in a situation where the best possible outcome is when all of society is united in a particular action that will stop the spread of the virus, it's better to keep people focused on stopping the spread and not focused on that it's all going to be over in a week to a week and a half, not to mention a sort of a sprinkling of a sense that everybody's overreacting, not to mention since my last podcast, he's literally been blaming the media for all the panic uh, rather than the actual seriousness of COVID-19. But anyway, you know, hey, you won't, you know, you won't get me complaining. Ireland, on the other hand, very early response in Ireland, and it seems like we're flattening the curve quite seriously in Ireland, which, of course, there was an opportunity to do that in other parts of the world since we've known about this since January, and some people took action quicker than others. So Boris Johnson has the coronavirus, which is not funny, but obviously there's some sort of irony or some sort of, uh, some sort of poetic justice in the fact that one of the sort of politicians who said everybody was overreacting ended up getting it himself but i do hope that he's not too ill as is the case with 80 percent of the people which of course we completely understand nobody's nobody's exaggerating the seriousness based on the fact that 80 percent of the people will be totally fine we hope that boris johnson is one of those people but you know it is quite funny that on march the 7th he was talking about shaking everybody's hand there was kind of a dismissal of the seriousness of it and now he has it probably gave it to other people and please god he didn't give it to anyone who ends up in a very bad state not to mention somebody that dies, which is the whole point of taking it seriously. You're trying to minimize the amount of people that die, you know, and you're trying to minimize the amount of exposure that hospital workers will have. You know, the whole point behind all this is not to be panicked. It's not being a lack, you know, not having a lack of optimism. What you're trying to do is have the best possible outcome. Because there are real there are real negative consequences for a certain percentage of people, whether it be uh, the immunocompromised, the elderly, but not to mention the people on the front lines uh, who are now uh, being exposed at a rapid rate. So Boris Johnson's got it. That'll hopefully make British people take it more seriously. Um, and uh, myself and Steve don't talk about it that much, actually. We talk a little bit about isolation and quarantine and how it's affecting our lives. So I hope you enjoy the ep. Um, I won't be back at the end of the ep, so uh, if you're um, if you're listening on iTunes, please give us five stars on iTunes. Leave a review. You know, you just scroll down to the to past the last episode, and there'll be an option to leave a review. Please do that. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, we love a screenshot. Share it on your Instagram. Share it on your Facebook. I'm listening to the Des Bishop podcast. 
Um, if you're watching here, do leave a comment. Uh, I'm going to put it up on YouTube. I'm going to put it up on Facebook. I'm going to put it up. Uh, uh, well, I can't put it up on IGTV, but it'll be on YouTube and Facebook. So please uh, leave a load of comments. Even if they're negative comments, even if this annoys you, please just comment away. Just just trick that algorithm into thinking this is the most popular thing ever. And here's me and Steve uh, at Des Bishop on Instagram. If you want to DM me, slide into the messages on Facebook if that's where you check it out. I'm on Twitter too, at Des Bishop. Uh, Des Bishop 5 on TikTok. See you guys the next time. All right. Well, welcome back. To- All right. Well, welcome back to the podcast. It's me and Steve here. Yes. Good to be. It's now it's switching between the thing anyway, but <laughs> now it's yeah, switching. Well, we'll, seems to be working. There we'll just go. have to. Yeah. No, I, Steve, I, I think, I think it's switching, bro. Let's not like get too distracted by that, but this could be. Well, sorry. We're excited by the technology. <laughs> th- th- this could be the most exciting. God damn. Thank God for the coronavirus, bro. I, I, I'm learning so much from this bloody coronavirus. It's insane. <laughs> It's insane how much I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. You're doing technology. I'm baking. It's all amazing. It's all good. Oh, yeah. You've been baking. Well, listen, yeah. man. We're having two very different experiences because, like, I'm here in, a, you know, splendid isolation. And, yeah. and you're, you know, you're like, you know, you're in some, you know, like a real proper family situation. That is, honestly, this this splendid isolation is not that different for me. Whereas you being home at, with the family all the time, that's a big switch. It's a yeah, it, it it is a big switch, and we've had to completely learn a com- new routine and a new way of doing things, and uh, it's taken a while. I think the last few days we've done really good. My daughter doesn't like; she's only two, so she doesn't realize that much the big change. But I think she is she is getting a bit narky. She wants to do her ballet. She wants to get out and do bits and pieces, and so we just have to. We've found new routines of kind of. Uh, structuring the day around doing things together and kind of having to do things together because most of the time I, I can you know i'm going to a gig that's that's my alone time you yeah know, you, got, no, you have no outs you've no outs and no I excuses no other outs. than like a trip to spar you know other than a trip to spar or uh, i have to do a podcast with des leave me alone <laughs> oh and are they okay with that i feel bad oh no 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 it's all good um but yeah how's it been how what's it like because it's kind of ramping up over there at the moment yeah well I'll tell you about that in a minute, but let me ask one question while we're just on that topic, yeah. just really quick. Do you wonder, because I was talking about this with somebody else, do you worry, perhaps, that when a child, a two-year-old child, gets so used to have their parents around all the time, which for them is kind of the optimum scenario. I mean, this, yeah. is, like a, this is like an ancient scenario of sort of people being around all the time. Yeah. Do you worry when all this is over that there's going to be like some serious separation anxiety, like they've just have gotten used to this this way of life? Um, not not hugely with our daughter because she's kind of had one of us around all the time anyway. Um, if she gets separation anxiety, it's generally from her mom, <laughs> not from me. So like if because she's her mom has been here the whole time they and they do spend a lot of time together. She gets separation anxiety from me if I go and I get the same from her if I have to go to the UK for a few days and the two of us are a bit like ah fuck this it's it's a bit too much. But po- yeah, possibly it might take us a few steps back because to be fair, she's two and a half now and only now are we getting to a point in our parenting career where we can leave her with somebody else so actually yeah, that's right, quite right, long. right at a time where you can't do it <laughs> exactly exactly so we were getting to a point where we could leave her with my parents you know and i was like oh that was great and we, we went to the cinema and we had some scenes like oh we don't even know ourselves and yeah the worry will be that we've lost that we've made good ground there and we've lost yeah that. yeah well in terms of me well first of all like when i'm out here in west hampton first of all i would never be out here at this time of the year but Often when I'm out here, particularly early in the season, I would have a couple of days where there's really not that much going on, not that many people out here, and I quite enjoy the splendid isolation of it. So it hasn't really kicked in yet like it's that different other than maybe I can't play golf or I don't know that in like three days' time I'm going back in the city to do the comedy set. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's not, that, it's not that weird. Actually, the thing that's freaking me out the most – is that for the first couple of days, I was like, ooh, you know, I'm really on my own out here. Will I be able to, you know, connect with people? And there's actually a lot of people out here. It's a very strange scenario where a lot of my friends are out here, but I feel kind of, I don't want to like 
make plans with them because I don't know what yeah. level of isolation people are at. I'm at a pretty yeah. serious level of isolation, but I would go for a walk on the beach, for example. So I have this yeah. weird thing where it's like, is it appropriate to be like, hey, Tom, let's go for a walk, you know? Yeah. And I, I, and I suppose, because you're right next to the beach, that is a little bit more accessible because you can technically go for a walk, but you got to keep your distance and all that kind of stuff. So, yes. so and, and I presume your friends are all very close by to you as well. You're not going to make the effort to travel far. No, to no, no. Walk, it's literally all within like uh, eight houses. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, I've that... seen them and all that. Anyway, the point is that it's just, it's just odd. But actually, here's the thing. <laughs> For a couple of days, I was like, oh, geez, you know, what's appropriate, what's not? And then you really get into your routine. And I'm sure you found this yeah. too. You get into your routine and then you're just like, Nah, I don't. I don't want anybody else involved. I'm quite comfortable yeah. in this. I'm enjoying the isolation. You get into it, I think. Oh, totally. So actually, totally. I'm. I'm. I, I. I like. I also like the virtual world. I've had great, you know, long chats with friends. You know, like I often have quick chats with friends on the phone. Uh, you know, speakerphone when I'm driving. But it's always like everybody's busy. Whereas now I'm having these like deep, meaningful chats with friends. And I have to say that I have, I have grown in my appreciation for the virtual world in terms of i used to often think that the virtual world doesn't replace a lot of the things uh you know that come from human interaction and i don't think yeah. it replaces all of it but actually i've been quite surprised how much it can actually replace that's pretty cool man because because there's the, obviously there's there's uh positives and negatives to it because like i found myself in the last few days kind of going get off the social media, get off the virtual world altogether because it's too much. Because all of a sudden, what I'm what I'm living off is, you know, Sky News updates, BBC News updates, yes. blah, blah. I'm just living through that. But actually, yeah, what you're doing is a great idea. You're reconnecting with people again. and Yeah, I'm, ta I'm not really talking about this. So I have to turn off uh, the, the, the CNN and the MSNBC yeah. and all that because... Uh, you know, that does drive me nuts sometimes. Plus, they always run the, the Dow and the S&P, and I'm always, like, freaking out, like, should I have bought some stock? You know, yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. that does take away my peace of mind. No, I'm just talking about, like, like for example, like, I have long uh, FaceTimes with my brother every day, my brother Mike. And, yes. like, we never he never has time to chat, you know, because uh, he's got two kids, and he's busy, and he's married, and, you know, like, he's, he's a track coach. You know, he's got so much going on normally in his life. Yeah. And we're having, like, these long FaceTime audios. I have FaceTime chats with my brother Aiden every day. Um, I have a chat with my buddy PJ, you know, like my, my best friend PJ, we talk every day. I, to be That's honest, great. I had one or two, uh, I had one or two like potential romantic involvements that were bubbling up and, uh, <laughs> I've been able to like have really long, you know, like, it's like, it's almost like a nice way to get to know somebody without the pressure of like, right. You know? Okay. So, uh, so actually, so has that, has that been a positive? Has that developed things for in, in a positive with the relationship stuff? I mean, it, it what it, I, what it definitely does is it kind of like, you know the way, uh, you don't know because you've been in a relationship for a long time, but in a situation where you've just met somebody, maybe you've had one or two dates, but you're busy yeah. or you're away, which is common for me, you'll have a scenario where you're you're like, you know, there's a lot of texting, but like you're just busy and sometimes you just yeah. want to be like, all right, enough, enough with the texting, you know? Yeah, yeah. Especially and when, texting's annoying after a while, especially, yeah. Especially when they're a little bit younger than you, you know they they're much more fond of texting than I am. You yeah, know, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like Emoji. three texts, and like if you want to if you want to text more than three texts, call me. Okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm from the '80s and the '90s. We we call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, long story short, uh, whereas I would normally like n not be into that, you know, now it's actually like yeah, it's great, you know. So you just indulge in the text. So I mean, it, it it's fun that way. The only problem is that if 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 anything brews up then you can't see them which is annoying but obviously that's the other great thing about getting more and more comfortable with technology you're not afraid to <laughs> you're not afraid to use technology <laughs> you're not afraid to use technology that's all i'm saying you know and i i've i've not been afraid to use it much but i've i really in the last i would say like in the last uh, 10 years after one or two bad incidents of other comedians people i know i've been less inclined to do anything virtual but Oh really? Desperate Other people times call for desperate measures, baby. That's it. We're we're in a pandemic. Like yeah, absolutely, they are desperate times. I used to love that part of the early part of a relationship, even though like probably for most of my twenties, I was never in a long term relationship. But that part of the relationship where there is a bit of text and, and then you're on the phone spending your credit. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like just two hours of just like Jesus, what are we talking about? Like that's it's an exciting part. It's good to get back to that stuff. By the way, you left your. Uh oh, we both did actually. 
Our names. Oh. I, I guess I did that in the settings, but our names are coming up in the in the corner of the screen every time. It's like over oh, to you, right. Steve. <laughs> right, do you see how the, how my name has got a, a capital A at the end of it for some reason? That yeah, wasn't on purpose, but anyway. Yeah, it, it, and sometimes with these, I, I notice on the TV when they're doing these zooms and stuff, you almost wish at the end of the sentence that they would say over. Yeah, yeah, because they keep cutting across each other, and it's like this is pretty good though. This is like pretty snappy. You never said over, bro. Over. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only fucking around. I'm only fucking around. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy with the, uh, I'm quite happy with the smoothness. But anyway, you were asking me about New York. You know what's funny, man? Like everybody that's in Ireland and in Australia and New Zealand, the people I've been talking to over the last 24 hours, they are like, "What's it like over there?" Like, yeah, the international media is portraying New York in what I think is probably a more honest portrayal of what's going on in New York. But even though CNN is and, and MSNBC are dying to, to get across how horrible it is, um, it's just not sticking as much over here uh, okay. the way it is internationally. You know? okay. So it, it, I think the next couple of days... Uh, will we'll, if if the videos start coming out of these hospitals, I think that Americans will start to real, realize how horrible it is. Because right now, there's a huge propaganda move coming from the administration to make it seem like it's no big deal, and they got Fox News, you know, backing them up. And yeah. then, as is always the way with Trump, it's like you fight back for a bit, but then eventually, it's like the fight back almost seems futile. So you almost kind of like sort of either pretend. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but suddenly it feels like people kind of get in line. It's like he's so successful at this fake news thing that mm. anything negative just is allowed to be dismissed. I mean, it's a, he's really he's really managed to create a, a sort of a, an authoritarian media control scenario, even though he's not in control of the media because he just dismisses yeah. everything negative as fake news. Yeah, yeah, and it's and you know it's very different the the mindsets and the attitudes when you're like from a metropolitan city like a new york or an la or something a bit more clued into what's going on around the world but there's you know there's a big huge part of america that voted for him as well that are just listening to what he says and that's it everything else. and they so well, they I, buy into the yeah i mean i'm just waiting to see news. more evidence of how bad it is because to be honest most of yesterday's news cycle was pumped up full of images from elmhurst hospital which is in queens very near where i grew up uh -huh. and uh it's uh it was, you know, the New York Times and CBS did, or ABC, I think, they, they got they got a camera in with this doctor and she took some images. And then the news cycle just ran with that one story, you know, and that hospital does seem to be the worst. I'm just waiting to see, you know, I'm just waiting to see more evidence of uh, of, of how, how bad it is. Because to be honest, I don't want it to be that bad, but I also, yeah. I also want Trump to wake up to the reality of what's going on. So it's that weird... You know, I mean, I had a rant about it the other day, but it is that weird dichotomy where you don't want it to be bad, but you also don't want Trump to continually deny the seriousness of it, which means that then people are not taking the necessary action from. Yeah, from totally. The, from, it's serious. From the, it's serious. Yeah. From the lay people who are just like a lot of them are just waiting to act like it's no big deal all the way to the top where Trump is trying to pretend like, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, I know a guy who definitely has it over here he he did a teledoctor uh appointment and you know he has chills sweats he doesn't have a thermometer because you cannot get a fucking thermometer oh, out shit. there's no thermometers available in any shop i've tried to buy a thermometer three times i feel fine but i just like i just you know you just want to take your temperature sometimes yeah just of course check, you want to check right it, yeah. you know and over here over here you can't get playstations by the way but anyway that's another point <laughs> <laughs> priorities bro <Yeah. laughs> anyway you can't get thermometers over here right yeah um i've gone in three times three shops each time you know i've gone into town three times and every time i've gone in i've tried to get thermometers in the supermarket and the two pharmacies can't get thermometers they just haven't come by the way you can't get fucking dishwasher pellets either um <laughs> some of the stuff has been fine but some of it uh, is dishwasher pellets you can't get them so anyway um he, he doesn't have a thermometer, but I mean, he had major chills and then into major sweats, uh, you know, fatigue, pains in his joints. I mean, he's got the straight up flu. Yeah. He's only assuming he has a fever. So he called the tele doctor and uh, the tele doctor said, you have it, I'd say, but don't go for a test because they're discouraging people to go for tests because they don't want to waste a mask and a shield on you when 
you're a young guy, you're probably going to be fine. So stay at home. And if it gets really serious, go to the hospital. But odds on you're not going to the hospital. Now, Trump is up there yesterday at the press conference saying like everybody's getting tested. And that, that's just total bullshit. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. People aren't yeah. getting tested. So it's definitely in terms of people having it, it's way worse than he's making out. In terms of how many people are going to die and how bad it is in the hospitals, I think we'll know more about that in the next couple of days. But I know for sure that the sort of the rosy picture that he puts out every day about the about the the PPE getting out, like PPE. How, do you ever know what PPE is before last week? Oh, I did because I, I used to work on building sites. But yeah, most people didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah like no PPE, but the PPE is not. You know, there's no way that it's 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 good enough yet. But he's just yeah. playing it down. Plus, any state that's bad, honestly, all the states that are bad, of course, are Democratic states because big cities tend to vote Democratic. So all the states that are bad, they're nagging Trump, and he's blaming the governors. Like that's that's just that's him. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, uh, it's totally ridiculous. And like, um, as far as I saw from a brief look at the news today, now there's more infections in the U.S. than there was in China. That's right. So that's it's right. like it's it's pretty bad. Like, and all you have to do is the maths on that. It's like. You know, the death rate is, is between, is it one and four percent then of infections? Is that the way that, that it's yeah, going? Yeah, the death rate is a toughie because they don't really know how many people have it. So I think yeah. in a year's time, we'll really know the proper death rate. Yeah, I don't yeah, think it's yeah. that important on guessing it. We know, one thing we know for sure is when you try to compare this to the flu, it's quite silly because the reality is that the flu does kill a lot of people. But I guarantee you when the flu takes somebody out, that people weren't surprised that that person died because they got the flu. Whereas yeah. the coronavirus, even if you're 75 and you're in a high risk category, the coronavirus is taking out 75 year olds that had a good 10 years left. The flu isn't, you know? Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, totally. Th th this thing is it, it, this thing will wipe somebody out quick, you know? Yeah. It's it, it's, it's, it's closer it, to it's, pneumonia. That's what they were saying in Italy the other day. Is like it's much closer to pneumonia than yeah. It well, is, it, than co it causes flu. that pneumonia, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For in, yeah. In, in 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 a lot of people. So anyway, the last thing I'll say on that because I do go on about it a lot is that. The problem is that now Trump is into this sort of like separating sections of society and saying, well, these guys aren't that bad, so they can go back to normal. And it's like, bro, do, do you just consistently make this mistake? In January, you said it was no big deal, so nobody took action. Now we have this problem. Then you have scenarios where parts of the United States aren't that bad yet, so you want to let them go back to normal so they can get bad. Like, yeah, how yeah. many parts of the world, how many places do you need to see this thing shifting into to realize that the earlier you try to flatten the curve, the better. Like you can literally contain it if you maintain these stringent measures right now. Yeah, yeah. Is part, of what, is part of why he gets away with it so much is part of the problem that most, like you'd be very clued in obviously to news outside of the US. Is it the problem that like most Americans, like I'm watching some of the top, pod, or listening to some of the top podcasts over there and some of their attitudes or their information on what's going on in America is like, totally you can see they've been fed something i'm like if you just read you know even the bbc or something like that it gives you a completely different perspective on what you're being told but it, it would seem i don't know i'm talking from the outside here that a lot of americans just they just go on what they're being fed in their medias and that's it it doesn't offer them any other perspective yeah you got any, you mean ex just, just out of curiosity like what is it like the fighter and the kid or something like that or what joe rogan for yeah, example, I mean, what, he, I mean he's, he's all he was always like that, but he's like talking on a platform with some scientists and stuff like that. And you're kind of going like I've watched him down the years. Anytime he gets into anything that happens outside the US, his knowledge is like so bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought that he was taking this pretty seriously, though. Is he or is he not? I, I, I haven't. To be fair, I watched a clip from like a week. ago. He's taking it seriously. Yeah. But um, I haven't, you no, know, haven't like to be fair. I haven't watched or listened to him. But anyway, in, the, the, in a while. the sentiment that you're putting out is is a, is a, is a hundred percent. Yeah, uh, you know, is is a hundred percent correct. So anyway, let's let, let's actually do, for me, please. Ireland seems to be doing kind of okayish. What's the you know? And when you think about how serious Ireland is taking it, you the re, the reality here is just so strange because Ireland has this you know relatively small amount of cases yeah. and a low amount of death, and people yes. are really adhering to it. I mean that that's the that's the difference between a unified nation and a divided nation. Yeah, it's it's um it's uh, I, I I've been genuinely quite impressed and quite taken aback by how everybody in general has got on board. Of course, there's a few little you know. 
there's you know certain people on Twitter are always trying to cause and stoke and yes. and 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 cause arguments and 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 get into party politics. Everybody in general, I would say, has you know forgotten about party politics, and everybody's getting behind um, each other. The, even the round of applause at eight o'clock last night, you know, the I whole loved, street was out. You know, it was amazing. I, it was amazing. I loved watching those tweets. So were you, were you? Was there much of that in Stony Batter last night? Yeah, a, a good ch- a good chunk of them, like all my neighbors, I'd say a good three quarters of my street were out. And it was like, it was quite emotional, actually. Yes. Was, I was quite taken aback by how emotional I was by it. And uh, my girlfriend was amazing because she was just out and she was just screaming like she was at a football match. You know, she's like, woo, yeah, you know, going going nuts. Oh, really? And um, yeah, it was just amazing. So there was that that sentiment. And it went, it went for quite a while. I think I've been genuinely quite proud of the attitude that Irish people have had in general as a nation because there is a lot more of an attitude of okay guys how do we get through this there's a lot mm. of talking in terms of the we um, I lived in the UK in London for a few years and I love London I've got so many mates over there but certainly the feedback and the experience I'm getting from watching what's going on over there it's a lot less we there's a bit of talking about we but there's a lot of people going hey what about my this and what about my that and what about and that's still kind of going on and there's such a socialist attitude in Ireland that genuinely is a person who who an Irish person and the person who lives here you're very very proud of it you know very proud of yeah, it yeah i mean that is the difference between i feel like like when when a society comes together and when there's that division and if you look at the united states and britain i mean boris johnson has it which we'll talk about in a sec but yeah, yeah. and i shouldn't say that with a smile I, i'm not happy about that i you know I, yeah. I, I i am not happy about that but but there is a there is a there is a poetic justice to it in a way because he didn't yeah. take it seriously but on the, but also in relation to boris both the United States and Britain have really given in to this divided society thing. The Britain represented it through Brexit and the states represented it through yes. liking or disliking Trump or certainly that sort of like liberal versus conservative divide. Yes. And both of those divides have represented themselves and some people are trying to move towards acting for the better of society and some people, you know, trying to diminish the seriousness of this, you know? Yeah. That seems to have become the conservative position in the United States and Britain, which is, come on, it's fucking bullshit, mate. It's, it's the media. I mean, Trump is literally basically saying that the problem is the media. He actually said that yesterday. So I, I, are you, I, I mean, I would think that it's getting quite serious in Britain so that they will get more unified quite quickly. But I, I haven't been paying attention to the UK too much. I, I, I think, um, I mean, I could be completely wrong here, but I don't see a coming together happening very soon because the divide is the divide that you're talking about in the states. It's there in this in 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 the UK, and it's a hard uh, divide, and it's it's deep. And um, I think in general, the conservatives have been there's there's definitely been a a how would you say um, a lightening, a softening of the party politics type stuff, but there's still. You know, I would say the consensus right now is everybody out for themselves individually. So lots of my fr- friends, you know, in the same industry as I'm in, self-employed and all that, you know, there's a lot of bitterness and talk about them getting looked after online. There's a lot of, you know, the the Tories came out with all these um, money packages to be able to pay people's wages while they're out of work and um, looking after certain people in the NHS and blah, all yeah, this I mean, kind a lot of, stuff. of the government stuff, a lot of the, the ad- actions towards the economy, I, I think have yeah. been pretty good across the They've board. They've been good, but world. now what's happening in the last 24 hours is they're, everybody's realizing, holy shit, we're going to be paying a lot of tax money. Do you know what I mean? So it is going to come back to, to bite them yeah. in, in the future. So uh, uh, Have we got a report yet? If Boris Johnson met Nigel Farage in the last two weeks, please God, he has. Yeah, <laughs> that fucker. Oh god. Uh, yeah, no. I haven't, it I haven't is heard crazy. It. Come on, it is crazy that fucking Boris Johnson got it. Like, oh, it's absolutely nuts. But he, he was like, it was his own. He was asked in a in a in a press conference. I think it was last week about he before they locked down the pubs and all that kind of stuff. He was asking people to stay out of pubs, stay out of restaurants, and basically most of the UK went fuck that. Fuck I can do what off. I want. And well, on um, March the seventh, he said he was shaking everybody's hand. Yeah, exactly. But when he was telling people to stay out of the pubs and all that, his own father said, I'm going to the pub. You know? So oh, that's like, right. Yeah, well, there just, was that attitude. There was this who gives a shit attitude, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's just like, and, and I, m- I remember St. Patrick's Day in Liverpool was like absolutely rammed. And the attitude from the young people then was like, we were asked to, we weren't told to, so we can go to the pub. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you froze where does that on mentality me? oh, come you, from? It's you, crazy. You, you, you froze on me just for a second there. Thank God you came back. <laughs> 
but you know, no, I was just saying in Liverpool, they, you know, when they when they asked people not to go to the pubs and the restaurant restaurants, everyone in Liverpool was like. They only asked us. They didn't tell us to do it. You know what I mean? And so, like, they're waiting for fucking to be told by the government. Now you can't go. Now we're yeah. shutting down. You know. Well, the, the reality is, is, even in Ireland, it showed that you have to. Like, yeah. You just. That's why government matters, man. That's the one exercise I've taken. For, the one thing I've learned from this exercise is that, you know, be, people need leaders. I mean, you know, they don't need fucking despots, but you know, you yeah. do need strong government. You know, you, you need, need strong you government. Need you need decisiveness. You need the rule of law. What's that? Yeah, yeah. You need decisiveness as well. You need someone to go bum and get behind what it is that we're doing. That's it, you know. So, do you have any? Um, do you have anything that you feel this has taught you? Is there anything about life that this has taught you? I was thinking about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, um, you're just forced into change. I mean, it obviously makes you think about what's important and what's not important, you know, and. Sometimes, you know, you'll be caught up. Well, I'll be caught up in my career and my job and what am I doing next and blah, blah, blah. And it, it really makes you get down to the simple things in life and kind of go, you, you appreciate, it's such a cliche, but you appreciate the little things, man. You know, um, mm. I got back, I got back to cooking in the last few days and I haven't probably cooked regularly in, in years since I worked in the restaurant, you know. And it was just like hours upon hours of just trying to get this dough right and, you know, focusing on this little thing. And it's just like, oh, Fuck, I can find happiness in this tiny, tiny little thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um so, you know, it's been and then my daughter loves loves the bread, you know what I mean? She's like, My favorite bread is daddy's bread. You know, that's just like is there any better feeling than that? You know what I mean? It's just like, fuck, it's it's great. So it does it does make you, you know, recalibrate and kind of realize, ah, oh, be thankful for these little bits and pieces. We've been going to the park exercising uh, for the last two I bet um I bet mornings. You're grateful you married a hot woman. Oh, you, sorry, Man. your partner is a hot woman. <laughs> she is kicking my ass at the exercises. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about like a, like a dagger to my masculinity. Like I'm trying to do burpees and she's like, come on, you little bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, burpees. I got to start doing more burpees, bro. Jesus. Man, she does. How many burpees to... can she do? Oh, she did. Um, She did. T- she set out this uh, circuit, uh, this set of uh, 50 meters of a bear crawl. Uh, like squats, uh, star jumps, planks, um, the mountain climbs, all that kind of stuff. She did all three the one of those. circuit. Yeah, she how did. How many she times? Did, she did three of them, right? How many? Did, how many seconds per exercise? Uh, it's like ten reps of each one or whatever like that. But there's there's ten exercises I think in each set. Yeah. So you you're doing a hundred basically of whatever exercise per set, you know. But man, I I think I I she did three of them and I barely did two. I was like yeah, fucking that's tough, crying. That's great to get into that. It's great that you have her knowing that stuff too. Yeah, you know? yeah, totally. Because I my fitness was always just football based. You know, I could just run around for ages. Yeah, well, you know I, I mean? had been but, doing these F forty five circuit classes like that and uh, right and, and different things. But so that's know, all those body weight stuff. I kind of dropped them when I did my back. I mean, I'm doing a little bit of that type of stuff off the TV, but yeah. it is good to have somebody to do it with. You know? Oh, totally. Totally, man. She fucking smashed me. Like, you know what I mean? Even doing doing abs at the end of it, like, I'm just like fucking crying. And then there's I have planks, my two-year... There's planks, there's planks in the circuit, though, right? There's planks in the circuit, but the, you, you know the ones that you're, you're planking, but then you have to get up and you have to get down and Yeah, up yeah, and the down. push-up plank, whatever the hell that's yeah. called. Yeah. And then there's and then there's crunches after that, and it's like so it's pretty embarrassing where you have your, your girlfriend and your two-year-old next to you going, you can do it, daddy. <laughs> I'm just like... Oh. <laughs> that's good though bro you're gonna be nice and fit after this please god yeah that's you the plan need it, you know because i i need it because the, the bloody the calories that i am ingesting man <laughs> you know plus you Stop. don't do like this is the whole thing everybody's like oh, i'll just do some exercise but it's like yeah okay fine i'll do some exercise but the reality is that there's like there's like an a thou there's a th- i reckon there's like a thousand calorie burn that none of us have now because we're stuck at home and that's just the burn of Going to the car, going to the bus, going to the yeah. shop. You know, all the just everyday Living. life shit that you're not doing. Yeah. Like, who is not sitting down at least 60% more than they normally do? Oh, yeah, at least. Well, and, and like, you're definitely not getting... I, I mean, I don't know, you're single, but maybe you're getting those 1,000 calories through sitting down and... What, through wanking? You know, yeah, I don't know. No, is it not? Wow. I don't, I don't know what the calorie burn is on a wank. You, you, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, man. I don't know why, but I still haven't had a wank. That's pretty impressive, man. Like how long? Wow, that's impressive. How long are you over there I've, now? I've actually had a little bit of talking dirty on the phone, but I still haven't actually haven't had a wank. Wow, 
That is impressive, man. I don't that's, know what's going on, man. I'm just getting you're old. You're doing sex drive. I guess that sex <laughs> drive is down, you know? Yeah, maybe. Serious I times, you know? I feel like when I do that, when, you know when you're holding a piss for ages and then when you oh. pee, it's just like the best feeling ever? <laughs> I feel like I feel like when this one comes, get out of the way, man. Yeah, you're gonna, need you're gonna knock the ceiling. You have to do it in the bath. It's gonna be such a. Fun. <laughs> I reckon I haven't wanked in so long. I'm gonna have a wet dream, I'm like a fucking fourteen year old. <laughs> have you ever not wanked long enough to have a wet dream in recent times? I, it happened to me before. I remember having a wet dream as a kid and having to go in and t- uh, say it to my dad because I wasn't quite sure what happened, but I just remember having crusty pajamas <laughs> and having to go to my dad. I was like, do you remember you were telling me about that wet dream thing? And he was like, yeah. I was like, I think I had one. I was like, yeah, just put your pajamas in the wash. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a totally true story, but, you know, I started drinking when I was 12, but by the time I was 13, I was already going way too hard at it. And one time... I got so drunk. The first time it happened, it happened many times after this, but the first time it happened, I blacked out. Somehow I got home and didn't get busted. And I woke up in the morning, I completely wet the bed, right? Which right. is something that used to happen a lot. And I, I, I don't know why I didn't try to hide it. You know, I just like, I just didn't. But my mother, it was, I guess it was a Saturday morning. My mother was like changing the sheets. And she was like, Desmond, what happened in, your, in that bed last night? And I was like, oh, oh, I don't know, but I guess I had a wet dream. I was like, a wet dream? No, no man has ever done that. <laughs> <laughs> Th- through, uh, through, the, through the mattress? <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty hot, Mom. It was a pretty hot dream. <laughs> yeah, it was an amazing dream, man. Cindy Crawford was in it. And Claudia wow. Schiffer. <laughs> 80s just to, baby just to give it a sense of time yeah. <laughs> Cindy Crawford and Claudia Schiffer were blowing me mom <laughs> Claudia Schiffer Claudia Schiffer who knows but uh, anyway um, yeah I had one like a couple of years ago I was like holy shit you still get these wow. you leave yourself alone <laughs> okay <laughs> well that's a good point yeah Lee, yeah, you have, yeah it's definitely part one is uh, leave yourself alone love, well the I, missus I, actually I love got up the, oh yeah the missus got up the other night and um, she was like she said she got up at 3 a.m. I tried it on with her basically before we went to bed. She's like, no, no, I'm too tired. I was like, fine, fine. Well, that's a good point. We haven't we haven't had sex since isolation. I don't know. We did really? actually once. No, we did once. We did once. I just remember. But because, here's why we did. Because I, she was like having none of it. And she was like, no, 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 I'm tired. I'm too tired. I was like, ah, oh, fine, whatever. But then she woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning crazy horny. <laughs> wow, there you go. <laughs> she went to go to the toilet. But yeah, but I was asleep, so do you know I mean? she woke up the next morning, she's like, good morning, honey. And I was like, good morning. And she's like, um, maybe I'm going to put the cartoons on downstairs for our daughter and um, we can, I was like, what? I'm not even awake yet. Fucking relax. <laughs> nice. Well, that's <laughs> good. You know, you probably woke up in the morning ready to go. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. But she was like a kid in front of the TV. <laughs> she's running back upstairs, dressing groom. And like, she, had, she just had the eyes on like, <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, I can't. Um, I can't figure out if this is better or worse for the sex life for married couples, you know, with children. Yeah, it's, it's harder. Uh, to, it's harder to get that that alone time, you know. Yeah, it's yeah, it's definitely harder, way harder. But also, it's just kind of you're just around each other all the time. There's no mystery to it at all anymore. Do you know what I mean? There's no haven't seen you in a few hours or whatever. It's just like ah, yeah. oh, you're still here. You'll have to try. You'll have to find some way to. Uh, you'll have to find some way to like. Um, put the the uh, the titillation the foreplay on fast forward you know you'll have to find a way to ramp up that desire quick yeah yeah i mean there's no i mean there's no costume shops open or nothing so it's kind of we're making do it's you pity, know it's a pity in just a way the, that i just have that patty hat on the door behind me that's about it <laughs> it's a pity there's no pill you know the way obviously you take some drink you have a drink and you have an automatic feeling right yeah yeah it's a pity we haven't figured out a pill that just literally just makes you super horny not like viagra that because viagra doesn't make you horny viagra just make you know Get, gives you an erection easy yeah but like there's no no pill because obviously booze can make some people horny but there's yeah. no we haven't figured out anything that's like you take it and a half an hour later you're just like we gotta fuck right now there's certain foods as well like seafood definitely i definitely if you haven't have you do you get an oyster if you have an oyster it's just like they say it's an aphrodisiac yeah 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 good old uh, natural aphrodisiacs but anyway no chance of oysters at the moment <laughs> so so you've you've learned to appreciate the finer things in life. That's what that's what led to that's what led to this. By the way, I asked you, <laughs> had you learned anything? I don't no, know personally. I, ha- I don't know personally for me. Have I uh, have I learned much yet? Other than um, exercise excuses are total bullshit, and this sense of not being able to get to an exercise class is now proven to be uh, total nonsense because there is so, it's so if you actually put that YouTube clip on or put something on, 
and follow it, you very quickly get, you know, you get focused like you would in a gym class. I'm quite nearly, surprised. Go ahead. It's, it's nearly about putting on the gear sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, but it's great to know that you can just do that at home, you know? Yeah, and it totally, is, bro. It is a good thing to get that discipline to be like, right, I just need a small, I just have to move one co- one coffee table. It does help to have a mat. My mat disappeared in this house, so I actually don't have one right now. But uh, move the coffee table, put the mat down, and just follow whatever 15-minute YouTube. Because what I found today was I said, first I said I'm not having breakfast till later on in the day because I'm fucking eating so much. I just like I just wanted to be hungry. I actually yeah. wanted the sensation of being starving yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I keep eating when I'm not that hungry. So I said, I'm just going to have coffee in the morning. I'm not going to eat, and I'm going to do some exercise. So I said, you know, because my back is at me. I said, I won't do the Peloton, I'll, I'll, but I'll use the Peloton dance class. So I put on a Peloton dance warm-up. Then I did a 20 minutes dance class. But the thing is, nice. that once that was over, it wasn't that tough, but the heart rate was up, the adrenaline was up. So then I was like, screw it. And I did a, a 20 minute strength and conditioning class too. And suddenly I'm like, you know, I'm 45 minutes of, of, of working out done. Now, none That's of it was nice, super man. intense. I might even do more later. But the thing is that like literally that five minute warm up video just made me ready to go. Now, I know yeah. I have a Peloton. That's handy. But all this stuff is on YouTube for free. Not, not the same yeah. ones, but there's good workouts on YouTube for free. Oh, totally, man. Yeah, I was on. The, I was swinging kettlebells the other day and all that. Yeah, it's so easy to do it. Ha- Speaking of dancing, I saw your TikTok the other day. Pretty impressive stuff. I Did have you to try say. to do that dance? No, I don't like. I haven't got it, bro. I haven't got dancing in me for whatever reason. I don't know why, and I'm not. But you didn't try I, to do that dance. No, no, I haven't tried. I'm it, hearing so. a lot of can't. <laughs> I'm hearing a okay. lot of can't. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> obviously, you've been on the because I I wasn't living in Ireland when you were on Dancing with the Stars, it so I never matter, actually bro. got to see it. Didn't see come it. from Dance with the Stars. It came from my desire to express myself physically. Oh, mm, mm, right, okay. There's a different language out there, Steve. Yeah, it's the language I should of get the into body. it a bit more. It's the language of movement. Okay. It's the language of expression. Get fluent okay. in it and expand your mind. Boom. Okay, you know I'll saying? try to. I'll, I'll get onto the TikTok videos. All the sports, have seen LeBron and all his family are like doing a TikTok dance every day. It's nuts. Oh, yeah. Well, Kai, you know, Kai from Dancing with the Stars yes. is, uh, is doing a TikTok dance every day because of my TikTok video. But the problem is that I told him to find TikTok videos to copy, but he's just like choreographing his own one which are all kind of good for like three people dances he's got three people i want like a tough one that's like good for one person but actually when when i did that i was like wow this is great i'm gonna do a tiktok dance every day but then actually there's not as many there's not actually that many great tiktok dances on there's a lot of women being sexy or a lot of these like hand things there's actually not a lot of good tiktok dances like that one the steps one is difficult have you tried that one you know what i actually i i went outside two days ago to do the steps when I was practicing in my house. The problem is that all the only steps I have in this house are my front steps, which are outside because I'm in a, you know, my house is on stilts. Uh huh. They're not the greatest steps to do it, but I would have done it except that my neighbors across the street are here. And uh, <laughs> it, it requires a lot of, it requires a lot of practice to get it right. And yeah. I was just like, I'm just not comfortable with, I don't even know these people across the street because it's like a summer place. Some people out here I've known for years yeah. I know that I'm touching my face, by the way, but I just have an itchy nose right now. I, I don't know what the protocol is when it's you okay. have an itchy no nose. No judgment. What do you do, like? No judgment. You Your know, hands my are nose clean. is itchy. So, um, now you've anyway, made mine itchy. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I just I don't know these people well enough to, to, to see them watch like a 44 year old man like practicing TikTok videos on the stairs. You just gotta you, know? you just gotta put up a sign on the front of the of the stills, just going, look, I'm I'm doing a hey, I'm Des, I'm doing a TikTok video. <laughs> I it. know they're not great stairs. I was thinking of finding like a. I, I was, you know, Long Island is actually so flat. There's very few places that have like a good step up. So I was thinking, is there anywhere out in West Hampton that I could go isolated and, and, and do this? But there's really no good, there's no good stairs. But I reckon I can do it. I can do the move. It's the, this kick forward steps move. I can do that move, uh, you know, um, without steps. Yeah. So I reckon, I reckon I could get it, but I, I, I haven't had a chance to really do it. Oh, actually, I just, you just reminded me. Maybe I'll go down to the public beach, you know, early in the morning when nobody's there. Because there's a public beach about, you know, half a kilometer down the street from me. Um, I might. I want to see it. I want to see it. Maybe there's. Oh, I'm dying to do that one, man. I'm dying to do that because I know that I can do it. Yeah. Uh, So um, I I, I might try it. Anyway, that's weight. I I don't know. But anyway, I I do enjoy all that. And listen, I'm really enjoying the, uh, the, the social media stuff and all the feedback that you get. But what else have I learned? I learned I'm way too comfortable with my own company. 
uh, which is e either good or bad. And uh, I haven't actually learned uh, much else, you know, d just yet. Yeah, because yeah, you love the, you my, love the my, bachelor life. What's that? You love the bachelor life. I do. Yeah, I don't know. Long term, it's going to be a problem. But it's uh, Jack Nicholson did it till the end, you know. Oh, really? It's, I didn't realize he was a bachelor. I was like, wow, okay, yeah. Yeah, he never, yeah. I, well, he might have got married once or twice, but I mean, he's basically been a bachelor all his life. I don't think when he was married, he really gave up the bachelor life either. But don't yeah, quote me on that. I, I don't, I don't <laughs> even know. <laughs> DiCaprio's the same, though, as well, isn't he? Like, he's never, oh, yeah, he's never. He's ironic with the, you saw that article? You ever see that article about that when they're 25, then he gets rid of them? And, oh, yeah, yeah, I did read that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They get a, they get a settlement like, and then just like start over, you know? See, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is awful, you know? Obviously, yeah, yeah. publicly, you say it's awful. And then when well, nobody's looking, Absolutely. you're like, he's killing it. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm, jo I'm joking, guys. I am joking. Joke. Okay? Comedians, Jesus guys, Christ. come on. It's a comedy podcast. You know, not that, we <laughs> not that we get that funny all the time, you know? No. I don't know sure. where I'm supposed to be looking exactly, actually. I reckon when I'm looking at... Yeah, I think you kind of have to... You, if you look at the camera, it's better. But if I'm looking at you... I know, but you, I keep... It's, I, it's very hard to look at the camera. You're looking at nothing. Yeah, yeah, you're just looking at it. And have next, you been looking at the camera or looking at yourself? No, I've been looking at you. Yeah, I've been looking at you a lot too when I'm talking to you. Well, maybe that's fine. So anyway, um, I, I guess we can, uh, I guess we can hit the road. That's today's little extra pod. I'll figure. We'll find out if this uh, if this recording is working. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, exciting, and who knows, we might be able to get Joanne on it as well. We can do a three way. Yeah, she's gonna do her own podcast now. You see this fucking little sneaky bitch, you know? She do a couple of pods and then she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna do my," which of course is totally fine. I'm I'm joking, yeah, yeah. by the way. But uh, we'll see if she can work out the technology. We'll see if she can work that out. I seen actually uh, someone, uh, uh, a female actor online going. Um, please, I know it can get contagious no matter what. Please, I know it's really tempting to not do that, but if you're straight and you're white and you're male, don't start your own podcast. I was like, that's imagine I what? said that the other way around. Yeah. Who said that? Oh, I don't know her name. One of the Dairy Girls. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was trying to be funny and all that. You that's, know? A and Gen then, Z. that's a Gen Z humor right there. I was like, oh my God. Because I, I wanted to reply and go, well, f imagine I said that about you. Like, do you know what I mean? It's just like, fuck. Well, you're hell. saying there's too many straight white men doing podcasts? No, just, just you do. If you, if you think that you want more women doing podcasts, well, what are you, a straight white woman? I like, oh, maybe you're like, I don't even know. But anyway, it's such a silly. But listen, that's just Gen Z humor, man. That's just like, let them at it, you know? Yeah. But, yeah. You know, listen, when I think about the idealistic notions that I had in my head when I was in my early 20s, you know, yes. it's like, and that was part of my development and I don't regret having those thoughts, you know, but as you get older, you get a little more well-rounded. And while I appreciate where that sentiment might come from in terms of trying to even out the patriarchy and, and try to take a, take a hit at misogyny and, and privilege, yeah. uh, they may not realize the, the, the full extent of what they're saying, which is fine. You know, I, I, it wouldn't get me, it wouldn't get me that angry, but I'm sure that there was plenty of, uh, angry dudes replying to that one yeah i wasn't i wasn't angry but it, it was more like kind of just kind of going Pfft. also it wasn't a very good joke that was probably no, what no, it's a bad me the most. Joke. <laughs> i mean it was silly it's just honestly yeah, yeah. honestly when i hear that i just think that's just a naive silly thing to say you know yeah well probably what angered me was whatever it was the fifty thousand likes or whatever it was like you know yeah but well hey. there you go but that's just the gen z's man that's their little that's their thing right now let them let them yeah. add it you know yeah. let them add it you know, but anyway, no the point being that it'll be good to have Joanne on it. Uh, yeah, the three of us doing it in three parts of the globe. It'll be cool. Yeah, because you can't have two straight white guys on a podcast. You have to have one no. straight white woman. No. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, two millennials and a Gen X. Yeah. You're, you're Gen X, are you? Yeah, man. All right, so Gen X. So it's, what is it? Gen X, millennials, then Gen, Gen Z, Z, is it? Gen Z. And is it, it depends on the decade you're born in, is it? It, there's a few, there's a few like, you know, there's different people decipher it in different ways. I mean, the general consensus on when millennials begin is born after 82. But right. But people can, people argue. Actually, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Joanne is a, is a, is a millennial, early millennial. You're early millennial. Uh, Originally, you guys were Gen Ys. Right. But then somehow Gen Y kind of just faded and from the lexicon and it became millennials you know people that came of age in the millennium yeah she's 80 i'm 85 and i think she is possibly 83 maybe 84. right so she's very early millennial she's right on the cusp you know yeah and you guys are very much people who have a lot of affinity with the the late gen x's like myself yeah. although i'm 75 i mean i'm pretty 
I'm pretty in there, but I am a, I am definitely second half Gen X. But the way yeah. I like to think of it is that the Gen X uh, was really already in adulthood before the internet became a proper thing. Okay. Uh, the millennials don't really remember a world without the internet, and the Gen Z, the Gen Zs, or the Gen Zs, or the Zoomers, as some people are calling them, are. Uh, they really don't remember a world without the iPhone or without like smartphones, you know, without yeah. social media. <clears throat> yeah, know? yeah. I said yeah. that like Trump. So I'm China. definitely early millennial because I completely remember cassette tapes and recording the radio and like I yeah. definitely remember before phones, all that kind of. Um, that yeah, was yeah, definitely my, my early teens and all. stuff. Yeah. Totally, yeah. I remember, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it was about 14, 15 when I got a phone, so... Um, I saw a great, uh, I saw a great one today. Maybe you saw it on my Instagram, which was, uh, "Don't blame it on the sunshine, don't blame it on the moonlight, don't blame it on the good times, just blame it on China." <laughs> Did you see it? <laughs> it, <No>. was, <laughs> it was so funny. He see, all of a sudden Trump pops up, China, <laughs> China. Oh, that's so the way everybody doing that on TikTok is so funny. China. <laughs> oh, oh, people are doing it. Oh man, yeah. So, so uh, why do you keep calling it a Chinese virus? Because it's from. China, you know the way, and <laughs> everybody's doing it. It's so funny, bro. I gotta do uh, it, China. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. China. <laughs> anyway, Steve, we better go. We're getting silly here. Absolutely. Plus, I'm excited right. to see if our method worked here. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. Peace well, out, mind everybody. Yourself, mind the family. Tell tell the family I said hello. 